So Von Prag failed to make a believer of me that day. But I doubt it'll bother him. Do I care if you believe what I do? I could care less. Do I care if cynics believe it? I could care less. After all, he's got plenty of those already. Is it fair to call you a believer now? I, I, I have to admit, it's the truth. I hope I can take this to my family and tell them what, wow, so, I am blown away. Ahead, can I get you all to stand, please? It's a million dollar challenge as we put three psychics to the test. Will any of them go home rich? How convinced are you that you're gonna win a million dollars? I have great confidence in my ability. Psychics say they possess mystical powers, but can they really prove it? With a million dollars on the line, a group of psychics were willing to step up and be tested. How did they do? Here's ABC's Juju Chang. Calling all psychics. The Nightline interns are spreading the word. There's a million dollar cash prize for anyone who can demonstrate supernatural powers. The man with the checkbook? A renowned magician and psychic debunker named Banachek. Were you nervous that no one was going to show up? Oh, I truly didn't think anybody would show up. Banachek is clearly not psychic because several people did show up, including a medium, a tarot card reader, and a palm reader. But first, a little more on that money. It actually belongs to the James Randi Foundation. That's Banachek's boss, magician James Randi. Right, I'm looking oh, really hard. Two, which hand? This one. No, actually, you're wrong. Where Again, did it go? I have no idea where it went. The amazing Randy has spent 30 years debunking psychic claims. What would you say to your critics who say you just don't have an open mind? Oh, I have an open mind, but not so open that my brains will fall out. After confirming the money does in fact exist, we're ready to get started. Let's meet contestant number one. My name is Jesse Bravo, and I'm a stockbroker by day. But by night, I'm a psychic and I speak to dead people. A psychic stockbroker? Well, he can't be much worse than the regular ones. Unfortunately, not everyone's open to the idea. So as soon as you tell somebody you're a psychic, they have to make a decision. Are you completely crazy? So you're are you crazy, Jesse? I think we're all crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Here are the rules for Jesse's test. 12 envelopes. Inside, photos of 11 random living people and one very famous dead person. To win, Jesse has to locate that dead person nine out of 12 times. Hi, Jesse. Like a game show. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you very much. The odds of winning by luck are about one in a million. But Jesse, of course, isn't counting on luck. What I try to ask is, whoever is gone, will you please just show me which envelope they're sort of contained in? You believe that's a dead person? Are you ready? But the spirits didn't answer. Jesse's first pick was this girl, and she's very much alive. That is a living person. Attempt two. Are you ready? This one is a live person. Strike two. He was supposed to find Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley. We know he's dead, right? Absolutely. Yep. I'm considered very good at what I do, and boy, am I bombing. Yep. You believe that this is a dead person? I'm hoping so. After another failure. It's a live person. A live person. Internally, I was crumbling. It's Jesse Bravo's last chance. Wow, that was very direct. Well, that one very strongly, I'm guessing. I'm trying different techniques. Okay. This one live. is? It's live. You think? Yeah. You're right. It's live. Jesse may have failed, but he says the problem wasn't with him. It was with the test itself. Asking an envelope, an inanimate object, to answer a question, it's a really tough thing to do. Maybe there's other people that can do that. I'm not one of them, obviously. Next up, two more contestants, a tarot card reader and a palm reader. Their tests require live subjects, 12 of them. We start by getting short, written biographies from each subject. They cover things from like past tense, present tense, things that are going on in their life now, a little bit of their character, whether they're humorous or a serious type person. Oh, and one other thing. Why are they wearing oven mitts? 
Like we want to hide rings, we want to hide calluses. There are so many things you can tell from fingernails and from the hands. Now, contestant number two. I'm Paula Taylor and I'm the psychic tarot card reader. I express my powers through the tarot card readings and then I'm able to tell them about their lives. Here are the rules for Paula's test. She'll be given the 12 biographies. Then she'll do a tarot card reading on each subject. To win, she has to match the person to the correct bio nine out of 12 times. How convinced are you that you're going to win a million dollars? I'm convinced. I, I have great confidence in my abilities. I'd like you to have a seat, just walk around there. Paula gets in the hot seat and starts her first reading. So I see that you're a person that's ambitious, you're involved in your work situation. I feel like you could be making more money. Okay, I'm going to go with this one. And this is your final answer? Yes. Right. Paula's clearly going to be a while. She has to do this 11 more times. So in the meantime, let's get started with contestant number three. My name is Georgia Jade. Palmistry is something that I first learned when I was 15. If you don't work in a creative field, you, you definitely think in a creative way. Do you make your living as a psychic? Yes, and I do actually do energy work and healing work and I channel as well. Channeling spirits? Mm. I sort of, I, I bring energy in and yeah, from, from the angelic realms. <laughs> we have copies of the active palms right okay. here. Here are the rules for Georgia's test. She'll be given the same bios for the same 12 subjects, but she'll also be given 12 photocopies of their palms. To win, she has to match the palm print to the correct bio nine out of 12 times. This is not a lot of information to work from, to be honest, but we will work with what we have here. I'm looking at the headline on this sure. one, which is curving down towards the lunar mount, and that would show a stronger imagination. I'm gonna go with this guy because he's a filmmaker. 20 minutes of mixing and matching later, Georgia has chosen a palm print for each bio. Okay. Excellent. Can I get you all to stand, please? It's her million dollar moment of truth. I'm gonna ask you to look at the bios that are on your sheets, please. If this is your bio, I want you to turn it towards the camera, not yet. If it's not your bio, I want you to crumple it up. Now. Crumpling. Everyone wrong. Oh. No, you didn't get everyone one right. You got one right. Whoa. You got one right, but you did not get the million dollars. No. You weren't just a little off, you were very off. Yeah. But that, that doesn't, doesn't surprise me. To do palmistry and not touch the person's hand is straight away kind of ridiculous. If it's not your bio, I would like you to crumple it up into a ball. But what about Paula, our tarot card reader? She's just chosen the bio for the 12th and final subject on Banachek's signal. Now. Oh, it looks like you've got one right. Mm -hmm. I'm so sorry, you mm -hmm. do not get the million dollars. Okay. I didn't feel like the cards really helped because there was no interaction with the readings. So this doesn't make you think twice as to whether or not you're psychic? No. I still believe I'm psychic. What do you make of that? I, uh, it's called, what's called, uh, what's the term? Stubborn. <laughs> Does this house sitting on the market for months have a problem you can't see? In this house, there's a lot of danger energy. Gotcha. Will these psychic healers help its realtor make a sale? Move out the energy of it being a dungeon? There's a very special school in California that attracts psychics of all kinds who want to refine their skills, like psychic hairdressers and even psychic debt collectors. For a fee, the faculty will even come to cleanse your house of evil spirits. ABC's David Wright caught up with them in action. What if you could see joy and heartbreak and sadness and grief just as vividly as you see someone's face. Let's go ahead and uh, open up your hand chakras. And if you guys want to do it too, you're welcome to do it. Even after the people who felt those things were gone. Are we all scared of going into the home? <laughs> <laughs> we tagged along with a group of psychic healers in Oakland, California, as they conducted what's called a house healing. In this house, there's a lot of danger energy. Sort of a household exorcism conducted at the request of a real estate agent. 
The agent, Luis Castillo Munoz, is not a new ager himself. Um, he just wants to make the sale. It's my business. If I want the house to sell, I put energy into it, energy comes out. So Even psychic it. energy? I'll do whatever it takes and to get it sold. As the psychics describe it, that gut feeling you have yeah. about a house or apartment? There's just a lot of pain mm -hmm. in this room. When you know in an instant whether you could ever call this place home? You can feel it. It's like it's dense. They say that's the energy left here by former occupants. It's the energy of like, you know, having, building your dream.